Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gear204 here bringing you another Minecraft World War 1 vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Albatross D3. The Albatross D3 was a biplane fighter aircraft used by the Imperial German Army Air Service during World War 1. There was also a modified license model that was built by Offag uh, for Austro-Hungarian Air Service. Uh, the D3 was flown by many top German aces including Wilhelm Frank, uh, Enrich Lohart, Manfred uh, von Richthofen, and many more German aces. Uh, there were also Australian aces as well, uh, Goodwin von Brumsky. Uh, it was the premier fighter and pretty much the most prominent fighter that took place during the period of German aerial dominance known as Bloody April in 1917. Uh, the aircraft itself is pretty cool. It's, uh, you know, your kind of st pretty much stereotypical, your typical type of uh, World War I fighter. Uh, biplane configuration and everything like that. It's uh, overall a really cool looking fighter and pretty much the pinnacle I would say of uh, you know real German aircraft during uh, World War One. I'm um, going ahead and uh, take a look at the model we have built in front of us. It's uh, overall pretty cool so I, I went ahead and decided to go ahead and go with a tan color scheme on it. It seemed like most of the um, the Albatrosses kind of had a tan color scheme. Um, on the top here I kind of went ahead and did like a little bit of a you know camouflage type thing design I guess you can say paint job with some speckled um, brown in it and uh, definitely adds a nice little flair to the build obviously you can choose to include it or not just have it straight tan or whatever color you really want uh, tail back here just a nice white tail and um, very interesting kind of configuration here for the uh, basically the you know the rudder and the uh, elevator and all that stuff the tail here very interesting the way it's uh, formed up um, but overall, really nice uh, aircraft. It came out really good, lots of detail, and obviously you have the cockpit right here for the pilot. And uh, for the most part, it's a really awesome build and came out really good. And it's been a while since we've done a World War One aircraft, so it's nice to get another one out for you guys. Um, I believe this actually might be a redesign too. It was a request from somebody, so uh, going ahead and doing it. But I do believe it was at some point a tutorial on the channel, or it could still be. I don't really remember exactly. Uh, but anyways, uh, nice redesign if uh, that's the case for the Albatross D3. Let's move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so moving into the tutorial, we'll be going ahead and beginning with our first layer, layer 1. If you're completely new to my tutorials, the way I like to go and structure my aircraft tutorials is I do half on camera, half off. This means that I'll build half the aircraft actually on camera while I'll build the other half off. Um, but the aircraft itself is completely symmetrical, so whatever you do on one side, you're obviously going to do to the other side. So uh, there's no need to build both sides as it's just a lot easier really and just in between layers you're just got the copy over the air side uh, of the fuselage and the wings and all that stuff. So pretty straightforward and self-explanatory we'll get to that a little bit more when we come down to it. Um, but yeah let's go ahead and begin with our first layer. As you can probably already tell this is the in-flight model so we are only building this thing in the in-flight position. Uh, to make this thing land it would have to be angled and stuff to actually sit properly. Uh, and we obviously do not have the design. That would be a whole different design altogether. So we're just doing the in-flight version for this tutorial. To begin with, we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, space, or the, basically the height we want to build this aircraft. Note that this layer one is the lowest layer on the aircraft. So if you're having, you know, something close by or something from the ground that might cause some clearance problems, just make sure you have this amount uh, of space in between it. Then just know that this can be the lowest point. So starting off with, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three blocks. And then we're just going to place down two narrow brick ups and downstairs back to back on both sides of this row three. This right here is going to be the very middle here um, in between the landing wheel, landing gear, which is these front wheels like so. Um, so that's just a space in between them. And you want to make sure again that that's the space of three in between those stairs. It's going to be the same thing on both sides here, two narrow brick stairs upside down and just like that. Once that's all done, that's going to do it for layer one. With that, let's move on to layer two. Alrighty guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to begin with, we're going to go ahead and take our nether brick stairs. We're going to place down two nether brick stairs upside, or basically back to back on top of the two nether brick upside down stairs to create a nice kind of circle here for the front landing wheels. And this can be done here on both sides. We then want to go ahead and go to the wheels and whatever direction we want the front of our aircraft facing, we're going to have the aircraft face in that direction. So we're going to go ahead and go to the front nether brick stairs here and place down a row of uh, three here of acacia wood slabs that go in between these nether brick stairs. Once that's done, we're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair that's going to come off the side of this nether brick stair. Uh, to both sides just like that. Once that's done we're going to go ahead and go ahead and go from the middle uh, acacia wood uh, slab there. We're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine spaces back. We're then going to place down another brick top slab. 
We then can delete this row of nine of blocks. So you have a space of nine in, from this narrow brick top slab to this acacia wood slab. Uh, basically a row of nine of uh, space in between that. Once that's done, that's going to do it for layer two. And with that, we can move on to layer three. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer three. Layer three, we start to see a little bit more of the aircraft start to come into play and uh, start to see a little bit more of the bottom of the fuselage start to get created. Um, but anyways, to go ahead and begin with, we're going to go to the stone brick stairs. We're going to place down a second stone brick stair that kind of goes up and in diagonal from that stair going up. In the middle space uh, right here, we're going to place down a quartz top slab. And this is going to be here in between uh, both these stone brick stairs. And actually, this stone brick stair needs to be re-angled so that it faces outward like that. So you want to make sure that your stairs are like this on both sides. And you have a quartz top slab here in the middle. Coming off that quartz top slab in the middle, we're going to place down two more quartz top slabs going toward the front, which is going to end right on top of this acacia wood top slab, or sorry, regular half slab right there. And then we just want to place down a wooden trap door coming off this um, quartz top slab just like that. Once that's done, go ahead and go back from this quartz top slab. We're going to place down a row of two of sandstone top slabs, two wooden trap doors on the top portion of the block. We're going to skip a space, place down a quartz top slab, a quartz full block, and a lever here on this narrow brick top slab facing in toward the quartz full block. And again, just to kind of make sure everything connects up, your quartz full block and everything like that should line up to look something like this. Um, we can then delete this place order block right here in the middle, so we have a nice space right here in, down the middle of the fuselage, and now we can work our way out to the sides. So going to the sides of the aircraft, we're going to place down a cobblestone wall on both sides of this uh, wooden trap door. Going back from the cobblestone wall, we're going to place down one and two quartz top slabs, which should connect up to the stone brick up and stair. From the stone brick upside down stair, we're going to place down a quartz, or sorry, a stone brick top slab, and then we're going to place down a wooden trap door after that stone brick top slab. When that's all done there, we're going to take quartz uh, top, top slabs, we're going to place down one and two that come off these two quartz full blocks right here, and we're going to pretty much go out a total of one, two, three, four, five, and six more. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six more quartz top slabs going out to the side. Same thing right here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We then want to take wooden trap doors and place down a row of seven of wooden trap doors along these seven um, quartz top slabs. So again, you have two rows of seven right here, um, just like that going across there for the uh, bottom portion there of the wings. When you have that all done, that is going to do it for layer number uh, three. With that, you'll copy that same design over to the other side, and when you have that all done, you'll be good to go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer four. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to begin with, we're going to go ahead and place down a smooth sandstone block on top of this uh, wooden trap door up here in the front. Coming off this smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down a stone brick full block and then a brick top slab like that, coming out on the very end there like so. Going ahead and going back from this uh, this uh, smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down a sandstone top slab, followed by skipping a space, placing down a narrow brick slab, followed by one, two, three, and four smooth sandstone blocks back, a black wool block, followed by one and two quartz full blocks, two quartz top slabs, and then an iron trap door here on the end. Once uh, that's done, we're going to go back up to the front and now work our way out to the side. We're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair, come off this stone brick full block right here on both sides. We're then going to place down a sandstone um, upside down corner stair, come off this stone brick stair right here. We then want to take smooth sandstone blocks, place down one and two smooth sandstone blocks back, followed by a black wool block, followed by an air smooth sandstone block, an air black wool block. We're then going to place down one and two cobbles to walls followed by a row of what is going to be one, two, three, and four quartz top slabs back, and then one and two uh, iron trap doors that go back like so. Going out to the sides again, we're going to go, ahead and go to our second quartz top slab in this row of four here. We're going to place down a skeleton school to the side, two quartz top slabs back, and then um, that's going to do it there for the tail and kind of the main portion here of the fuselage. With that all done, we're going to go to the wings now and go ahead and add on to those. So for these to start off with, we're going to place down two iron bars, come off these two smooth sandstone blocks. We then want to go ahead and skip a space of two, so one, two, and then we're going to place down again another two um, iron trap doors, so two blocks of space in between them. We're then going to grab ourselves a birchwood fence uh, post and also a stone brick stair. We're going to place down a fence post on top of this quartz top slab and then a stone brick up down stair coming off the fence post going toward the front. At this point right here, you can kind of decide what you want to do. If you want to keep the kind of a consistent color, you can just go ahead and take some uh, wooden pressure plates, uh, the standard oak wood, and just place them down the wings there to kind of keep a 
you know, kind of brownish, light brownish color up above. Um, if you do want to kind of copy what I did here and have like a little speckled brown in it, you can just kind of randomize some uh, brown carpet into it and uh, kind of add a little bit uh, to it and everything like that. So uh, that's kind of up to you guys if you want to add that or not. If not, no worries. Uh, but, you know, you have a couple options there for what you guys can do for that. Um, anyways, just make sure the design's a little bit different on both sides. You don't want to copy the same exact thing. So just, you know, make sure that the so, you know, pattern is a little bit different to kind of add a little bit more variety to the aircraft. Anyways, once that's all done, that's going to do it for layer four. With that, let's move on to layer five. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, we're going to start off by placing down a brick slab on top of this brick top slab. Going back from the brick slab, we're going to place down a black wool block, followed by an anvil. Coming off the anvil, we're going to place down an upside down narrow brick stair, followed by a dark oak fence gate opened up, coming off the narrow brick stair, opened up toward it. Continuing on, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block that's going to be on top of this one from the previous layer. And then we're going to place down a black banner coming off the side of the smooth sandstone block like this to kind of create the back seat here, uh, or the back of the seat so you get something that kind of looks like this for the pilot. Um, coming off the smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down a sandstone stair with its back to the block, followed by two sandstone slabs coming off the front of the stair, a nether brick stair, and then two more quartz full blocks and a quartz upside down stair. After the quartz upside down stair, we're going to place down a redstone up here like this, and then a white carpet like that, coming off the redstone repeater on top of this iron trap door. With that done, we're then going to go ahead and go to the sides now. We're going to place down a stone brick slab like this to both sides of this black wool block. We then want to place down a sandstone stair like this, and coming off the sandstone stair, we're going to place down a narrow sandstone stair. So we have a corner stair, regular stair like this. Coming off this stair here, we're going to place down a narrow corner stair like that. And again, continuing on, we're going to place down a sandstone stair facing this direction on this black wool block. Coming off this uh, sandstone stair, we're going to place down a narrow one like this, so we turn this stair into a corner stair. So basically, we have a corner stair, regular stair, corner stair, corner stair, and regular stair like that. Uh, we're then going to place down a sandstone slab going back. We then can go ahead and skip back here to the tail. We're just going to place down white carpet on the remaining iron trap doors on the tail piece here, and then two stone buns on these two uh basically sandstone or uh, quartz top slabs on both sides and also a stone bun on the side here of this quartz full block on both sides there. Uh, with that done, going to the wings here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a cobblestone wall and again another birch wood fence post. We're placed on a birch wood fence post on top of this one right here, followed by a cobblestone wall on top of this um, stone bricks upside down stair. Uh, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some iron bars and over the middle space here, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down one and two iron bars like this on the back portion and then we're going to place down one that goes forward kind of to the outside there. So you want something that kind of looks like that and it's going to be the same thing over here on this side. And once you have that all complete, uh, that is going to do it for layer five. With that, let's move on to layer six. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six, to begin with, we're going to go ahead and take our redstone appears. We're going to place down a redstone appear on top of this black wool block with the not just flicked out to this side here. We then want to place down narrow redstone repeater on top of this block or this uh, narrow break up downstairs. Also, again, with the not just flicked out to the sides there. We're then going to go ahead and uh, go all the way back to the tail here. We're going to place down a quartz slab on top of this first quartz full block, followed by a quartz full block after the quartz slab, and then a quartz stair on the back that quartz full block like that to create the tail there. Uh, once that's all done, we're going to then grab ourselves a stone brick slab and place it down on top of this first sandstone corner stair here. We then want to place down a birchwood fence gate after the stair or the slab like that, and then we're going to place down another stone brick slab like that coming off of it. After that, so we're going to place down two uh, stone brick top slabs coming off these two sandstone slabs, and then in between them, we're going to place down a uh, iron trap door like that. Once that's done, coming off of uh, these two uh, stone brick top slabs here, we're going to place down a iron bar on both sides, and then in between the iron bars, we're going to place down a iron trap door. Uh, once that's done, we're going to place down a row of three of iron trap doors across like that. We're going to go ahead and then place down another iron trap door in the middle, followed by again a um, iron bar to both sides there. Going ahead and continuing on, we're going to go ahead and place down another birchwood fence post that goes up like this. After that, we're going to place down a iron trap door in the middle space here, followed by a stone brick up downstairs that kind of comes off the uh, iron trap door going toward the front. And then out to the side here, we're just going to place down two rows of three of iron trap doors. So one, two, and just like that, we have our two rows of three. And then we just want to place down a row of two with an indent toward the front there. And once that's all done there, that is going to do it for layer number six. With that, let's move on to our last layer, layer seven. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and moving on to our last five layers. We're going to be moving on to layers, uh, or basically our last layer, layer seven. So uh, before we go and move into this, I want to do a few quick little additions um, 
for the previous layers. Um, so basically one thing we want to do is you want to go and place any stone button on both sides of this quartz full block here. Um, back on the teal I forgot to include that so let's go ahead and make sure there's, sure there's a stone button on both sides there. And then also we want to go ahead and come up to the front here and put the propellers on. So or the uh, blades here for the props. Uh, so basically this is very simple to do. Uh, we just want to go ahead and kind of come off these uh, two brick slabs here connecting up basically at an angle. So we're going to go ahead and go down at an angle like that for the first blade going down and then over here we can go ahead and this time go up. So we're going to place down a, a top slab here and then a half slab there. So you can kind of see what we're going for here. Just kind of an angle kind of staircase pattern uh, going across like that. And you should get something that looks like that for your prop up there. Anyways, once that's all complete, it's time for us just to put our top wing on and we'll be pretty much good to go. So for this, uh, very simply, we're going to place down a row of two of uh, what can be sandstone slabs. So one on, kind of on the space above this anvil and one also on top of this last redstone repeater right here. We then want to place down two more um, sandstone slabs out to the side. We're then going to place down a row of three across the stone brick top slabs and iron trap door. And after this, we're going to place down a total of one, two, three, four, and five more rows of three of sandstone slabs. So one, two, three, four, and five um, out to this. And actually, my bad, it's supposed to be six. So I probably miscounted here. Uh, but we should have a total of one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven of these rows. So that slab was kind of hidden by the sand there. Uh, but yeah, we should have a total of six of these rows of three and of sandstone. And then we're just going to place down two sandstone slabs on these two iron trap doors there. So looking at it from above, we should get something that kind of looks like that for the wing. And again, if you want to add that little extra detail, little camouflage pattern, you can take some dark oak wood slabs and just kind of mix it into the, <clears throat> the slabs here on the top, just to kind of create a little bit of a pattern and... Uh, kind of a camouflage scheme which adds a little bit more to the uh, aircraft if you ask me or something like that so uh, feel free to go ahead and go crazy with that you can do your own camouflage pattern in different colors you can make the aircraft green who knows do whatever you want but for the most part that's going to do it for my tutorial for the uh, German World War One Albatross D3 my plane hope you guys did enjoy the tutorial and are able to put good use if you guys do end up using this as I do I say you guys give me proper credit for it this being from Sun the Build tweet to my channel or this video if this does appear any social media sites just be sure to get proper credit for this build. That's all I ask for when doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and it continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of tutorials. So as long as you guys give me credit for your free to forever projects you guys are working on. Other than that, thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204 and I'll see you guys next time.